In March, as the novel coronavirus spread rapidly across the United States, testing was lacking. While there were many problems, one simple one was a lack of test swabs. We've heard numbers upwards of 10 million swabs per day are needed right now in addition to what's already supplied just for the United States. So as hospitals started to do all the swabbing, they just couldn't get enough swabs and testing crawled to a halt. Traditional methods of manufacturing work great in normal times, but a pandemic is not normal times. One of the big manufacturers of swabs is based in Northern Italy, a region that had been heavily impacted by the coronavirus. The Air Force uh, ferried swabs from Italy. There's one company called Copen where most swabs are made and tried to get as many as we could to bring back. As the virus spread rapidly, demand for testing in the U.S. had so overwhelmed supply that even people with symptoms of COVID-19 could not get tested. That also meant that no one really knew how many people had the virus or what the safe path to open the economy might look like. We still have millions of people that need to be tested, and so we can't wait. Um, we have to use these as a tool to be able to judge when is it safe to bring people back. Traditional manufacturing moves slowly, so a new industry has been tackling the shortage, 3D printing. Many people still think of 3D printers as novelty items from the early demonstrations at electronics conventions. But while 3D printing is still just a sliver of all manufacturing, industrial 3D printers already churn out everything from airplane parts to dental aligners. With all but non-essential manufacturers closed during the crisis, Many of these printers were now available to print items that are essential, like nasal swabs. So could 3D printing meet the demand? On the West Coast, 3D printing Unicorn Carbon, which in normal times is best known for making midsoles for Adidas, started thinking about how its technology could help. It focused on both test swabs and face shields. It was really a very quick pivot. Um, in terms of really focusing on the needs. We went through 10 iterations of design on swabs within a week. We were able to partner with Stanford University, you know, locally, and then Beth Israel Deaconess in Boston, and get clinical feedback on these within a couple of days. And working with uh, our partner, Resolution Medical, who is a medical manufacturer, right? and working with our dental partners who have a resin that's been approved by the FDA. So it all came together very quickly through our network. On the East Coast, 3D printing Unicorn Form Labs, founded by a group of MIT engineers, also designed test swabs. We have uh, a lot of customers who are in healthcare. They began reaching out to us and saying, hey, we think we can use your printers to fight COVID by making these parts that are in short supply. Those users were at a couple of hospitals, one at the University of South Florida and another one was Northwell Health in New York. And uh, they had developed these printed swabs and they asked for our help for producing more and for kind of refining the design and making sure they work well. Uh, so I would say a lot of it was coming from our users sort of telling us how we could contribute to the fight. HP, Origin, Desktop Metal, and other 3D printing companies we're all working on this effort to ramp up test swabs. As different manufacturers started designing and testing their own swabs, ideas proliferated. What should the tip of the swab look like to grab a big enough sample? How should the neck of it operate to make it as comfortable as possible for the patient? While you might think a test swab is just a glorified Q-tip, these medical devices are more complex than you might think has a, a very rigid handle for the clinician to be able to grasp it. There's a break point where the handle breaks off into the vial and you don't want it to break when it's being used on a patient. And then it has a long flexible neck that allows the uh, tip to navigate through the nose and the, into the back of the throat. And then finally it has a lattice tip that replaces the traditional flock brush that you would get on a swab. And so we were able to create uh, more than 20 completely different designs in parallel, 3D print them all at once, sent them to the clinicians, and they chose the most promising design. 
probably from the first swab we printed until they had patient trials was like two weeks or less. Normally a product like this actually doesn't require any kind of FDA approval. It requires the manufacturer to take on the burden of testing and verifying the product. But the FDA has gotten involved knowing that this is like an unusual situation and um, to help things move more quickly. One advantage of 3D printing is that the swabs themselves can be produced in bulk at a medical manufacturing facility or the digital design file can be passed off to a hospital that has its own fleet of printers to print on demand. Supplies have been terribly disrupted uh, based on this virus. And so really, how do we enable local supplies became a rallying point. We had a lot of the elements already in place. We had printers in hospitals. We had biocompatible materials that we produce in our own facility. It kind of feels like we were already set up to do exactly this thing. Form Labs is in a lot of hospitals, which meant that they were more accessible. So if we were able to come up with something that could be used, then we could distribute that amongst some of the network of the 3D medical teams, and that way it could help a lot of hospitals immediately. By doing that, then we actually could reach more of a target audience so that we could get these out to help as many people as possible. But don't do this at home. Unlike basic cloth masks, where there's little danger of doing it wrong, nasal test swabs are medical devices that need to be made by qualified medical manufacturers. We know that there are a lot of hobbyists out there who want to help, um, but we've had to explain this is a medical device being used for diagnostics. Um, it can't be printed by just anyone. So we don't want people to get in trouble. But the biggest thing is we don't want people to have um, tests that are not vetted, that have not been validated, and then that be used as public health information. And so we're doing that um, under the practice of medicine. Rick Fulop, co-founder and CEO of Desktop Metal, whose company makes metal 3D printers, had an idea to bring together the normally competitive industry into a loose coalition. He started organizing a group of CEOs and he set up a website, printedswabs.org, to act as a clearinghouse for the effort. In a period of about three or four days, we had two dozen companies that had the capability to make product at scale. 100 plus people worked throughout those companies to try to make these prototypes, get them tested. Out of that, five products came out that, that meet all the requirements and those are now in production and volume. And so all of this stuff is happening in record time. And we sort of put our egos aside and decided that, you know, as an industry, we can provide millions of these swabs per week and scale to tens of millions. I don't think there's ever been a, a time where like the CEOs of so many direct competitors, at least in our field, were together on calls and, and, and talking about how to make progress on a common problem. Wide-scale testing will be needed in order to safely reopen the economy, and continued testing will be required for long after that. That means that even as other methods of producing test swabs come online, and the existing manufacturers of them ramp up their own capacity, there's likely to be demand for the 3D printed versions for some time. 3D printing's capabilities during the crisis could also prove to be a turning point for that industry. What I'm excited about is that we started this situation with a shortage of swabs and we probably will end up with an export product. I think there'll be uh, you know, continued interest in 3D printing. I think some healthcare providers would even start to see them as a necessary piece of equipment, almost like a backup generator that you know that a hospital would have, it's gonna it's gonna make a big impact on 3D printing. We're gonna come out of this. The world's gonna be different, and I think it's up to us to really create that new trajectory, not only for a company like Carbon, but for the 3D printing industry. So I think it, I look at it as, as an opportunity for us to really create a very different future.